Welcome to the Loaded Cannon. Newcastle United won Arsenal nil. Arsenal's first defeat of the season in the Premier League. Um, man, just what a frustrating game. What an unbelievably frustrating game. Newcastle, oh God, they're, they're flipping annoying. That's all I can say. They're unbelievably annoying. To me, watching the game today, it looked like Sandro Tonali had the entire Newcastle squad on a group bet to get an Arsenal player sent off. It seemed like that was the main objective of that team today, to try and rile Arsenal up, to try and get them, um, you know, reacting to their uh, provocations. It was just, it was an, a 90-minute exercise, a 98-minute exercise in trolling. And I can't believe that the game finished with 11 men on the pitch for both teams because, man, there should have absolutely been a red card for Bruno Gomares in that game. It's unbelievable that he stayed on the pitch. You could say that the, um, the, the arm to the face was enough. But then after that, when you, when you look at all of his interactions in that game, um, there was the arm to the face in the first half, there was the hand to the sort of throat sort of area of Fabio Vieira, who, yeah, don't get me wrong, Look, I haven't seen enough replays. I'm doing this immediately after the game. To me, it looked like it was sort of just under the face. And yes, Vieira is holding his face. It's embarrassing. I don't like to see that. Gabriel did it in the game as well. But he got a yellow card for that. That was his third. The shove in the back on Jorginho for absolutely no reason. It was so premeditated. As soon as he did it, even before flipping Jorginho had hit the ground, Gumares is doing that, saying, get up, get up, get up. Like, you know you've just shoved him in the back. How at that point, the referee, after missing the arm to the face, has he not booked him for that? It's an absolute joke that Gumara stayed on the pitch. You know, and a lot of people are going to talk about the triple VAR. Um, God, honestly, is uh, what bugs me. I'm going to be really honest, right? I, I don't have a massive problem with the decision because I was watching it. And on all three points, I didn't know. Looking at the images, yes, it looks like the ball is over the line. But you know how it is. If the camera angles from here, and if the camera angles from here, that ball will look totally different in terms of whether it's over the line or not. So it was absolutely inconclusive. What I don't get, though, is that let's get this goal line technology across all of the white lines on the pitch. Like, why is that so hard? It should just be a given that in this day and age we have that. Conversation for another day. So fine. In terms of the, is the ball out of play or not, I don't know. Um, I'll accept it. Then, is it a foul or not? For me, the way Gabriel tries to attack that ball, it's like he's clueless that Joel Linton is behind him. You have got to get up early. If you know there's a man behind you, you have got to get up early and get any contact on the ball. For me, it looked like Gabriel was trying to get like a certain kind of contact on that ball, which is why he went down first to then header it. You can't be doing that. Get up, get big, do whatever you need to do. It doesn't matter if you knock it out for a corner. It seemed like he was trying to maybe flick it on. And I know you've only got like a split second to make that decision. He made the wrong decision in that split second. I think if he knew 100% John Linton was behind him, for example, then he goes and attacks that ball with a bit more aggression um, and, and gets his head on that ball. But instead, he's gone down to go up and that's given Joel Linton the opportunity to go for a header. And I don't think it was a foul in all honesty. It looks like a foul in slow motion. Just the fact that Joel Linton had his arms ahead of him, in front of him. But when Gabriel goes down and then comes up, I don't know whether who's initiating contact with who in that moment, but it's not enough. It's not like a push. You don't see Joel Linton bent at the elbows and extending his arms out to push uh, Gabriel. So, yeah, for me, even that is like, I listen, if it went Arsenal's way, I wouldn't be that surprised either. But in all honesty, like, I, I'm, not, I'm not there going, oh, that's got to be a foul. It's 100% a foul. And then the offside, look, all Anthony Gordon needs to be is level with the ball. And... Yeah, I don't know. I really, really don't know. With those ones, it's um, he looks like he might be level, but often you'll look at it and they'll give you a decent line and it'll be a knee or a toe or something. And that's what I was banking on. I was thinking, please, because obviously because Raya was ahead of the play, please give me a knee or something, but inconclusive. That is so frustrating. 
you know, like you see things, you see decisions where you think to yourself, like, why have I never seen this before? But it's always Arsenal on the receiving end of it, like Martinelli's two yellow cards against Wolves. Um, we saw Anthony the other day not getting two yellows for blatant uh, situation where he should have got two yellows in very quick succession in the same sort of phase. But it's, it just needs to be Arsenal that suffer these stupid things. This triple VAR check and then, oh man, when have you ever seen that before? Happens to be Arsenal that comes comes off on the wrong foot. One thing I want to talk about with the goal, David Raya's positioning from crosses is awful. Absolutely awful. He's so far forward. You need to like drop one or two yards back behind your front post. He is so far forward. Uh, trust me on this. Look out for this. Every team that plays Arsenal is just going to dink crosses in. That's it. They're going to dink crosses in. Livermento tried to put in a cross sort of near post. Raya plucked out the air. Looks really good when he does that. But he looks an idiot. Like he has been in, in recent games where his positioning is all over the shop. Even on this one. He, he just exposes that middle part of the goal so much. Just come back a couple of yards. Your positioning is off. And like we need to nip this in the bud because it's going to cost us. Because when a team is in that sort of position, he makes that situation even more dangerous by creating that gaping hole in the six-yard box. You can't just focus on your near post. Another player, and you know who I'm going to talk about, Kai Havertz. Man, the challenge in the first half. It kind of summed him up today. It was committed. Don't get me wrong. Kai Havertz was committed. He pressed. He got stuck in. But it wasn't clever. It was not of any use to Arsenal. You know, have we really signed Kai Havertz, of all people, for £65 million to apply pressure? Kai Havertz, come on. We cannot justify his performances all the time by saying, oh, he closed down well, aerial threat, this, that, whatever. Come on, man. Kai Havertz is not that guy. I'm telling you that right now. He is not that guy. He might be one out of every 10 games. He is not the guy nine out of 10. We massively missed Erdegaard today. Saka, when Erdegaard isn't playing, is nowhere near his highest level. And listen, Saka's brilliant, don't get me wrong. And I know Erdegaard hasn't been that good in recent weeks. And perhaps that's why Saka's dropped off as well in recent weeks. Because I've always said that Saka, Erdegaard, Ben White, when the three of them play in a little triangle together, they cause teams no end of havoc. But that didn't happen today. Obviously, no word of guard. Ben White was not, again, you know, the usual level of consistency. And I spoke about after West Ham, what big teams do and what big players do. Arsenal didn't respond like a big team today, unfortunately. And Ben White, he didn't respond like a big player. Fine. We have to take it on the chin. We put it into context. First Premier League defeat of the season. So we just have to accept it and move on. But it was very disappointing. I'm going to end it on a positive. Declan Rice, he is that guy. No matter what happens, no matter about how bad Arsenal play, he keeps his standards. I thought he was very good today. His engine is something else. Honestly, he just covers so much ground, always in the right place, tracking back, driving forward, eating up the yards. Declan Rice, I thought, was our best player today. Saliba was okay. Other than that, there was really no one that sparkled. Martinelli and Saka, Newcastle will have done a very, very good job in keeping them too quiet. They were very, very good um, at doing that. Um, you know, we had we had like quite a lot of corners today, didn't pose any threat, especially the late corners we got in the game. We loaded the back post. I was looking at that. Rice was there. Um, Harvitz was there. Tomiyasu was there. And, and I'm thinking, come on, like hit that back post. Trossard's corners just didn't do that enough. A really disappointing week for Arsenal. Two defeats and, um, yeah, gutted. Absolutely gutted. I'll see you tomorrow for my five at five. And, yeah, just got to dust ourselves off and come back even stronger.